Hi, I'm Symphoneers, and Popper's the Midweek Magic event again, so I thought it'd be fun to do another video of three Popper decks you can play. This is going to be a little bit different from my usual videos, in that I will just be doing a quick deck tech for each video and then showing off one or two games of each deck in action. First up, we have this Orzov Reanimator list, the second deck will be Mono Green Stompy, and the third deck will be Azorius kind of Bounce House or Azorius Tempo. So this Popper Reanimator list is based around Soul of Migration. It is a 2-4 flyer that creates two 1-1 birds when it enters the battlefield. This can be cast for its evoke cost, three into white if you're unfamiliar with evoke. It just means that if you pay the evoke cost, it is immediately sacrificed upon entering the battlefield. Now, Evoke pairs very nicely with Feign Death. If you cast Feign Death on the Soul of Migration after evoking it, it will be returned to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it, and you'll get the birds again. So the kind of primary combo of the deck is evoking Soul of Migration, casting Feign Death on it, and getting just a pile of birds and value for 5 mana. As a kind of backup plan for this, we have Late to Dinner. It's just a basic reanimation spell. Um, if the Soul Migration has ended up in our graveyard without doing that combo, or they murdered it or something, we can Late to Dinner to get the Soul of Migration back up and active. We also have Breathless Knight as a 4 of in the deck. This is just because we're doing so much graveyard stuff that it will regularly get plus one, plus one counters from us just playing the game. And it's a, you know, Flying Lifelink 2-2. Two -two pretty good creature in general. We are running Bone Shards as some of our primary removal. This can be used to chuck Soul of Migrations into the bin, uh, or to discard Kitchen Imps. Kitchen Imps have Madness. Madness, if you're unfamiliar, means that if you discard this card, you can instead cast it for its Madness cost. So a 1-1 Flying Haste Kitchen Imp, uh, pretty good. For a little bit more graveyard shenanigans, we're running a playset of Underworld Chargers. This is just a 3-3 that we can discard to bone shards without feeling bad, basically. Uh, we're running a couple of Inspiring Overseers, just two on flyers that can help, you know, generate some value, ensure we hit our land drops, etc. We're running Feed the Swarm as our secondary removal spell. This is mostly to hit creatures, but occasionally to hit problem enchantments like All That Glitters or um, like ill-gotten inheritance is semi-common in, in Popper. Uh, aside from that, we have a playset of Healer's Hawks, just to kind of help with the aerial beatdown we've got going on. And yeah, that, that about covers the deck, so let's get into some gameplay. Ooh, pretty awkward opening hand. Um, we don't have anything to force a discard for Kitchen Imp. Uh, and no creatures. I'm going to mulligan. This hand is a lot better. Okay. Keep six, drop. Mm. Inspiring Overseer, I think. Just because it's kind of a mediocre creature. Um, we only have tapped mana, which is a little bit awkward, but... Oh, goblins. Mono red aggro. We'll see how this goes. Uh, the Hawks are actually pretty good at, you know, counteracting 1-1 one -one spam, so depending on the build, we might be okay. Nest Robber, yep. Lots of, lots of beatdown. Uh, let's do the untapped land just so we can play out both birds. And then from there we can play out a tap land, probably discard the other land to Bone Shards, or we can get the Breathless Knight down. Oh, do we want to block the nest robbers? Maybe. Yeah, I'll I'll take it. They can just race us too effectively with the two ones. So I think the trades here are worth it. If they'll give it to us, they do have a shock to blank one of the healer's hawks, which we're fine with. Um, soul migration. That's helpful-ish. Awkwardly, we don't have, uh, like, a feign death or whatever. I'm just going to shoot a nest robber, discarding a thriving heath, which is not ideal, but we're definitely on defense, even though our life total is fairly high. Second goblin javelinier, sure. Get to lava runner, no haste, which is helpful. They only have the one shock in the graveyard. Um, so yeah, not, not a 2-2 two -two haste yet. Oh, Inspiring Overseer, that is pretty good. I think I'm going to do that over the Breathless Knight, just because then we can block something with it. 
or block the lava runner with it. Uh, play out the breathless knights maybe. We can't block the javelineers with it because they do have text that would kill it before it dealt combat damage. Um, hmm. We can evoke the soul of migration here just to get some birds on the field. Uh, yeah. The javelineers make that pretty awkward just because, again, they, like, like the overseer, they die before they can effectively block. Uh, another nest robber, that's pretty fine, we'll just take this. Lifelink flyer, go vroom vroom? Yeah, so we're hoping that the Breathless Knights can help us kind of stabilize until we draw, like, a land and a feign death. Or something like that, anyway. Uh, no blocks again. Down to nine. Thriving Heath, sure. Pick black as the land to bear it with. Um... Hmm. We might be kind of racing with birds. I'll, I'll evoke a soul of migration here. Um, yeah, block the nest robber with one of the birds, if they attack with it. But they do. I'll take that trade. Javelineers hit us, we're fine with that. Ooh, healer's hawk, alright. I think I'm going to evoke the other soul of migration, just because this is feeling like a very kind of linear, linear beatdown game. We're not going to get to do too much fancy, fancy nonsense here. Uh, opponent at 9, we're back up to 15, and they throw in the towel. Good game to our opponent. I think I'll do a second game, because that was pretty quick. Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. This hand is a little bit slow, a little bit clunky, but we do have Late to Dinner and, like, Breathless Night and Soul of Migration, a lot of good cards, and Tap Land, so I think I will, I'll take it. Um, might do the Overseer to start. It depends on, hmm, Cram Session life gain, maybe? Removal spells might be nice here. Another late to dinner, not super useful for us. Hmm. Priest of Ancient Lore, so yeah, like, Selesnia value, Selesnia life gain, oh... Triple late to dinner. That's a that's a thing. That's a vibe. A thriving Heath. So we're curving out at least, or hitting our land drops. So, uh, hopefully we can get some board presence happening before they uh, before they land like a unicorn or whatever. Like they're they're Johnny's pride mates. They're life gain threats. Hmm. Yeah, just do do the tap land, get the Breathless Knight down. Kaka! Swing in with the Overseer. Hmm. I would love a Bone Shards here. Because then we could discard stuff and reanimate it with a late to dinner. Which feels like a pretty good play pattern. Um. Yeah, hard to say. Out Muscle. Ooh, neat! Oh, I, I forgot to mention in the deck tech, one nice thing about Breathless Knight is that if you reanimate it, it triggers its own text, so it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Super useful with Fane Death. Um, yeah, we don't... it's not a full-on 4-4 four, four in this situation. Do we want to do... Well, I'm glad our opponent packed some interaction, so we have some kind of interesting choices to make. Um, let's... I kind of want to get this Breathless Knight down first. Just because this Breathless Knight will also see us reanimating the other Breathless Knight. So, this is how we kind of max value that situation, then we can evoke the Soul of Migration. Um, hopefully... ooh, 7-6. That's a... that's a thing. Well... Uh, hitting our land drops, you love to see it. So, let's late to dinner the Breathless Knight. Uh, both of them trigger and become 3-3s. Three we don't have any food token synergy, so I'm just going to spend our mana here to heal up, go back up to 20, probably take 
a lot of damage this turn, but you know, we're we're trying our best. Um Ooh, they have more removal. Not great. We do have another late to dinner though. Or like more more late to dinners. So that is helpful. Scale the heights, yep. Hmm. Oh, they drew all their rabbit bites, basically. Oh, that's less than ideal. Um, yeah, I'm going to late to dinner again, because why not? We know they don't have more rabbit bites in hand, so... Get the knight back on the field. Do we block the Priest of the Ancient Lore? Maybe. Maybe. I, I think so, actually. We just need to stall. Need to stall until we draw removal. Uh, like a bone shards here would be amazing. Pest summoning we're not super concerned about. Bane death, yes! Uh, this is helpful. Okay, so I'm going to enter full control. I don't remember if this is entirely necessary, but gonna do it just to be safe. Soul of Migration, triggers go on the stack, then Feign Death, the Soul of Migration. Pay one, resolve all. Uh, so this entire process happens, and now we have a pile of birds to work with, which is helpful. Um, how do we want to do this? Block, 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 take two. I think this is fine. We could, we could hold on to the birds for the hill giant, but I think we want to, like, uh, we can evoke this to get more birds out, but I think I would like to get one of the Breathless Knights back, keep it on defense, eat the food again. We will double block. I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna keep everything back and be kind of extra safe. Uh, another Priest of Ancient Lore, sure. Nice to see some draft cards getting play. I, I'd say that like that's not super common. Um, The more common type of draft cards or draft green cards you'll see in Arena Popper are like what I'll show off with my next deck. I'm just gonna multi-block, see how they assign blockers. Oh, they let us keep the knight. Neat. Um, we'll do that. We will choose black. We can just hard cast Soul of Migration. All right. Uh, we'll we'll do that then. Ooh. Well, we successfully stabilized, and our opponent is just like, no, nah, I'm I'm out of tricks. So we got there in the end. Yeah, I'll I'll keep that match in just because even though we don't you know take them down to zero, it showed off of showed off some of the fancier parts of the deck. Uh, yeah, on, on to the mono green beatdown list. So, this list is quite a bit simpler than that previous reanimator list. We just have two pieces of primary ramp in Llanowar Elves and Into the North. We have two fight spells in, or pardon me, bite spells in Master Rebuke and Ram Through. And we have a pile of creatures that every single one of them, like other than the elves, draws a card. Um, Owlbear and Silverback Shaman are the big ones. Seraph's Packmate draws a card and can be foretold, so this can smooth out curves if you didn't hit all your ramp and stuff. Lanoir Visionary both ramp and draws a card, and Elvish Visionary just draws a card. You beat people down with big 5-4 tramples, basically. <laughs> so let's, let's get into some gameplay. A little bit land heavy, but I'm gonna roll the dice here, see if we can't ramp into, like, cast the Visionary on to hit a large creature and kind of go from there. Uh, potentially a nice fast start. Commune with spirits, sure. So maybe a kind of like budget runes build or budget enchantment builds. Perfect. An owl bear on three. You love to see it. Druid of the cowl, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I am just going to slam the owl bear. Draw a card. And, yeah, see what our opponent gets up to. They have access to four mana. Maybe a pack mate? 
or something. Opponent reading Owlbear. Oh, they just kill our Llanowar Elves? Sure. Bolting the bird on turn three. Quite a bit less impressive than... Or, like, less less useful than turn one. Uh, they commune again. And that's fine. Um, We could Master's Rebeek here. I think I'm just going to play out the Elves we drew and attack in with the Owlbear. Yeah, they take four, and that's that's okay. Holding up the Master's Rebuke here in case they play out a big thing I want to kill. Uh, pretty much. Looks like they might fight something else? Oh, Masked Vandal, alright. More 1-3s. Coiling Stalker, okay. Well... I think I'm going to lean on the side of being aggressive and just take out one of the blockers. Um, we keep drawing lands, which is suboptimal, but crash in with the owl bear again. Hmm. Maybe we could have baited a multi block if I was more patient with the master's rebuke. That seems unlikely to me, though. Ah, our opponent plays a harmonious essence for a, to create a 4-5 Vigilant Forest. No blocks, I'll just take that. We keep drawing lands, which is not great. Ah. I am going to just block with the team, basically. Get that. Get that pesky forest off the battlefield. See how they assign blockers, it's, yeah. Take out the owl bear. Um, and everything else is fine. Our opponent might play out another harmonious essence or something. Looks like they might have some graveyard reanimation or like dig of some kind. Season of Renewal, neat. Uh, return one creature card and return one enchantment card. So they get back the Masked Vandal and the Harmonious Emergence. We will play out the Silverback Shaman we drew and don't have good attacks, so... We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Harmonious Emergence happens. I'll block this again. Uh, trade it off. Oh, it looks like they might have a fight spell. Oh, no. Okay. I'll play out the land, attack with the Shaman. They might multi-block with the smaller creatures so that their forest can do return damage. Hmm. See what they do here. Yep. Okay. Uh, take out the Coiling Stalker and the Druid of the Cowl. Uh, so, yep, that's fine. Mana Dork and the thing with text. Draw a card off of Silverback Shaman. Hooray, a pack made. Helpful, give me another. Ooh, I'll, I'll take it. More can-tripping creatures, let's go. Uh, that's land. Hmm. <laughs> mm, I might cut a land or two before I upload this list, just because I feel like I've been drawing heavy with it, or like drawing a lot of lands lately, which is uh, flooding out, which is not ideal. We do also have multiple mana sources in all of the Lanor stuff. Um, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We will probably just be attacking with the Silverback Shaman next turn. No oh, more owl bears. Let's go. Oh, chain those owl bears. 
More cantripping beaters. Woo! Uh, swing in with the shaman. Take out the masked vandal because it's thick. Hmm. Draw a card off of the shaman. We get a visionary short. Uh, the Tales of Master Seshiro flips. 5-5 five, five, Vigilant. Their board is pretty big, which is awkward for us. Oh, they solve our problems. Lovely. Uh, very happy they didn't decide to stall things out and prolong the game there. So we can ideally trade. They don't have any combat tricks or like a Tamiya safekeeping in hand. So we get to keep the pack mates. Visionary. Voo! Packmate. Oh, and they're just not here for it. Yeah, we Masters Rebuke the Wolf to fight fight the Archer, uh, play out another Visionary. Yeah, we, we end up having an okay game there. I would say, if you want to cut a land or two and just get some more creatures or something in the deck, it would be fine. I think I'll, I'll upload it as is. Um, yeah, good game to our opponent. On to the next deck. So, this is an Azorius Popper Bounce list inspired by the Popper Bounce list I played on uh, Moto Magic Online. We, of course, are missing a lot of good cards that Full Popper has access to, like Reality Acid and Spreading Seas, but the same game plan kind of still applies. We have a bunch of creatures with bounce ETBs and kind of uh, things that generate value on ETB, like Spirited Companion, um, Inspiring Overseer, Chrome Courier, all of those draw cards. We have nine creatures that bounce things when they enter the battlefield, Roaming Ghost like Moonsnare Specialist and Mana War, and we have Gust of Wind as well. If we control a flying creature, most of our creatures fly, incidentally. Um, it costs two mana, it bounces one of their non-land permanents back to hand, and we draw a card. We also have Core Skyfisher, this is just to reset creatures, get them back in our hand so we can replay them. We have Cloud Shift, this is our blink spell of choice, so we can kind of replay creatures for very efficiently, very cheaply, and, you know, draw more cards, bounce more creatures, etc. And we have a place of Healer's Hawks, just as a cheap threat that can you know, get in some chip damage, lifelink us up. Um, and yeah, that, that about covers the list, so let's get on to some gameplay. Um, pretty reasonable opening hand. We can do a tap land on one, name blue, and then do, uh, play out a companion. Then we can reset the companion with the core skyfishers. Uh, get, get our circus of value rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, chip damage with the companion. We could blink it too. I don't know that we need to. Save the cloud shift for now. Um, if we need... If we need that value, we can get it. Exhibition Magician. Sure, that is an efficient way to make a bunch of bodies or ramp in red. That makes me nervous because that suggests they're going for something big. Um, also a little bit awkward just because when the opponent plays ETB creatures, our plan of bouncing everything and kind of tempoing them out gets a little bit clunkier. Uh, will Skyfisher to reset the companion we just played and chip in in the air? So our opponent up to five mana. Something big incoming, maybe? Oh, Sticky Fingers, sure. Mm -mm -mm. Nice thing about Bounce versus Sticky Fingers specifically, we can blank it or like uh, drop the aura without them drawing a card. The Exhibition Magician does have ETB value, like I was saying, so that's not Super ideal, but I think it's maybe worth it. Um, let's do that. Let's Gust of Wind the Magician back to hand. Draw a card. Uh, play out the dog. Draw another card. We have a pile of bounce creatures, which is solid. We should be able to apply good pressure from this point, like 
if they play out a huge, you know, seven mana thing, bounce it with the ghost light or whatever. Um, I think I'll take this. It, yeah, we're we're looking to apply pressure and beat down. Exhibition magician does stuff again. Make another treasure token. Goldhound, sure. What are they ramping for? Like I'm into this. I am here for whatever they're doing. I'm just confused or like haven't seen a list like this. Goldhound back to hand. Not a great bounce target, but uh, we do have Cloud Shift. We can hold up to blink the Ghost Light and you know bounce a huge threat. Maybe Spark Tongue Dragon. Ooh, when it ETBs, you can pay three, and it if you do, it deals three to any target. Neat. Uh, let's... So, blinking here doesn't stop the ability from happening, so I assume they pay for it. Yep, they do. What do they target? Ghost Light. Amazing. So we blink the Ghost Light and bounce the Spark Tongue Dragon back to hand. Oh, I, I look, I've looked at that card before, and I think versus other decks that play Pattern, our opponent's game plan would be very solid, but versus our deck specifically, uh, bit, bit rough. Uh, good game to our opponent, though. I think I'll end the video there. If you liked it, I or I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, click all the buttons below and stuff. Helps the channel a lot. Uh, and yeah, have a wonderful day. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support the channel, clicking on one of these fun rectangles would help a lot. But even if you're good for now, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.